Senator Mary Lozick hasn't forgotten what happened during the Racine recount following last summer's recall election. This McIver News report describes some of the problems uncovered during that process. Voters did not sign the poll books. Addresses were not given for new registrations. Unmarked ballots were pre-initialed. Ballot bags busted open. Others were opened and resealed with packing tape without explanation. Now, a year later, Lozick has introduced a series of ballot integrity bills. Six of them had a public hearing on Wednesday, September 4th. And the things that we found down there that were um, quite frustrating are addressed in these bills. So all of these bills relate back to that. And as I talk about it, it brings back the, the vivid memories of, of those days. Government Accountability Board Executive Director Kevin Kennedy said the problems in Racine have already been addressed. Oh, actually, we were very proactive uh, with Racine. That, that was the June 5th uh, election in 2012 that resulted in a recount for the state Senate, which is one of the recall uh, offices that was on the ballot. Uh, that was the fourth election that uh, the city of Racine and um, we saw one of the benefits of a recount is it's like a performance evaluation. You see the problems. And so we stepped in after that election. Democrat Senator Mark Miller provided some bipartisanship by signing on to a bill that relaxes residency requirements for elections officials. But he disagreed with Senator Lozick over the existence of voter fraud. I don't understand what chain voting is. She, I think she meant chain uh, what I mean is chain. voting more than once is what I mean. I don't think there's ever been in, anything other than isolated incidents of where that's happened. And it's usually been a confusion because an absentee ballot and, a, and then voting in person. And as those from Milwaukee County testified that investigate that, they said there just isn't a paper trail to determine that. Scott Fovel from People for the American Way testified against all six bills. There has not been enough uh, evidence, real evidence, uh, produced anywhere around the country that voter ID fraud is a problem, and we do believe that this will disproportionately affect uh, minority communities, specifically the African American and Latino vote. We believe that uh, requiring a voter ID, uh, if it is not free and easy to obtain, is an undue burden on the voter. Senator Lozick argued the way elections are conducted makes it difficult to collect and investigate information on fraud. Those are the types of things that uh, alarm us and that those ballots are counted and the election's over and there's nothing you can do about it. If you can crawl inside one of those ballots and prove fraud, that's one thing. But you can't crawl inside that ballot and prove fraud because it's over. The election is done and the people have... Uh, evaporated and uh, so to speak and in, in, back into their lives and there isn't an investigative arm. What we have here today is bills that will provide that opportunity and we have things like signing the poll book, these things we've done in recent years to give law enforcement the tools they need and the evidence that's available to show that there is not voter suppression, that these are fair votes, that no one is being denied or that on the other side. Uh, it is. So it's that balancing test. It's that fairness that I strive for. Senator Lozick's office said there is no set timeline on when her ballot integrity bills will move forward. For the McIver Institute, I'm Bill Osmolsky.